Have you ever come across a mathematical function so intriguing, so mystifying, that it breaks conventional boundaries and shows up in places you'd never expect? This function shows up all over physics, engineering, neuroimaging, crystal growth, and more. Not to mention, it's pretty useful for solving equations as well. Today we're diving into the Swiss army knife of special functions, the enigmatic Lambert W function. And what I think is personally just as fascinating, I was never taught about this function when I was in school. So grab your favorite cup of coffee, tea, or whatever fuels your mathematical curiosity, because this is going to be a journey into the mathematical universe you don't want to miss. Now that we've hyped things up, what is this W function? Well, it's really an inverse to this equation. In other words, what we're calling W is the solution to this. Oh, and I have to mention, we're not just limited to real numbers here, we can extend this definition into the complex plane. Now, already, just with this definition, there's some problems. It's defined as an inverse function. Yet, there's really no way to describe W in terms of elementary functions. Moreover, you might notice that if you look at the graph of x e to the x, it fails the horizontal line test. That is, it doesn't have a unique inverse unless we're looking at specific intervals. And things get even more complicated if we extend this to the complex plane. And because of this, the Lambert function is really multi-valued, having multiple branches depending on the values we're looking at. For real numbers, we really only need two branches, which are denoted like this, and fortunately, this so-called principal branch actually has a fairly nice Taylor series representation. Now, there's a whole mess of identities that go along with this function that each have their own uses, but I want to show you one of the most straightforward uses of this function, and that's solving some equations that you might not otherwise be able to solve. Take a look at this equation that looks relatively simple at first glance. But using standard algebra techniques, you might not get very far. However, armed with the Lambert W function and its identities, we can tackle this head on. Now, the Lambert function uses x e to the x. We're going to have to create that somehow in order to get what we want. But let's start how we might normally start, which is to gather all the variables on one side of the equation. Let's divide both sides by 3 to the x, which we can write like this using properties of exponent. Now we sort of have something that starts to look like x e to the x. That's what we're going to need if we're going to use the Lambert w function. But things don't match up here. And we also don't have an e. So let's put one there. And we're going to do it right here. I'm going to insert an e, but we can't just insert e, that would change the entire equation. We need to compensate with the natural log, its inverse. And the other nice thing here is that we can use properties of logarithms to drop down that exponent. So we have x cubed e to the minus x natural log 3. So we're getting a little closer. Let's get even closer by taking the cube root of both sides. That will get rid of the x cubed. Using properties of exponents, we'll have to divide by 3 in the exponent. And fortunately, on the right, the cube root of 1 is 1. Now we're very close to having x e to the x. It's just that in the exponent of e, we don't have x by itself. We have x with a minus natural log 3 over 3 attached. So to have things perfectly line up, multiply both sides by minus natural log 3 over 3. Now this has the exact form that we're looking for. It's just not x, it's x times minus ln 3 over 3. But we can apply the w function to both sides all the same using the property, the fact, that w and x e to the x are inverse functions. 
meaning that when we compose them, they essentially undo each other and just spit out the argument. In this case, W undoes the left-hand side and just leaves us with the argument minus x ln 3 over 3. And now we can solve for x using regular straight-up algebra, multiply by a minus 3, divide by an ln of 3, and we have the exact value of x that solves this equation. Now, that might not be crazy satisfying since our answer is in terms of w, and maybe you could solve this using that series representation or something similar, but I want to show you another way to deal with this using another calculus technique, Newton's method. Newton's method is a fantastic way to solve equations or approximate solutions of roots, and this is something that you may see in a Calculus 1 course. Fortunately, plugging in the Lambert function into the Newton's equation formula isn't too, too bad. This is really what we're trying to solve, and so this is our function in this case. Just take its derivative, you'll have to use the product rule once, and this is our iterative formula. Now, you might have to go out a few approximations before you get an answer that you're happy with, but you will get a nice approximate solution. I should mention that you could have just used Newton's method to start with and get an answer, but I really wanted to showcase the Lambert function in this video. Well, you're really going to like this video, this infinite power tower of I to the I to the I. I did mention that the function can be extended to the complex plane, and this is an awesome application of that. Click the video on the screen. I promise you're going to enjoy it. I'll see you in that one.